Oh, it's 201. Well, we're a small group. Yeah. Simpson is, um, is our third presenter, and he is the band director, and apparently he is listening to a uh, final presentation, so he's not going to join us till about 2.45. So I told him that he could go last. Um, does everybody know everybody? Teresa, you're in management? Yes. Management. Oh, good. Okay. In the HEB school. Sandy Guzman Foster is uh, in the graduate program in the Draven School of Education. Carmen, uh, you teach Spanish, right? No, I teach uh, HR management. Okay, <laughs> boy, I was totally wrong. Okay. <laughs> All right. And, uh, Hi, how's everybody doing? Hi, Hi Cesar. Hi, Cesar. Good to see you. Good um, to see you also. Peggy is here. She's in religious studies. Patsy teaches math. You guys all know uh, Kathy Bataro. You know Caesar, and you know Adela, who's running this. We're at her. We are uh, in her mercy. Uh, I'm gonna. Th <laughs> I think, let's have uh, Sandy go ahead and start. Does that sound okay to you, Sandy? That's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, I've done several projects in the past, and I was thinking of one that might be something. So let me just start all over. And one of my one of my projects for my philosophy class is that my students have to create uh, a school based on their philosophical understanding. So if they had you know a million dollars to design their own school, what would that look like? And and based on what philosophy that we've learned in the class, right? So that would be their final project. So uh, most of them would do like a regular PowerPoint presentation. But what I had them do, uh, what I could have them do next time I teach this class, is to um, do like an um, either a, a brochure they can share online or even something like a uh, infographic because the infographic will be able to show the mission of the school, the philosophy that underlines why, the population, um, what their goal is for the school, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I have another project where I do with, I actually do with undergrad students where they had to do a presentation on community connections. So the idea is as future teachers, you have to know your community. So a lot of us who are, have been former teachers, we used to just drive to our school, not really looking at what was around the school. You just go to work, it became so normal. But what's in the community that can help the students and the parents, right? So I would have, if I had to do this again, I would have them actually do visual photographs of um, like a community center or a church or even Google Maps where they can actually show the neighborhood. Um, and then also do things like interview people just to get their voice. They don't have to have their face, but interview people and have audio on what they learn from, let's say, the pastor at the, at the church or what they learn from the community center director. Um, so that way they have a visual of not, you know, they'll see the pictures of the school, the pictures of the community, and then not only that, but have voices that connect to that. And also when you have the Google Maps, have the actual building so they can see what that looks like in the community. So does that make sense so far? That makes a lot of sense. What about the rest of What? What about the rest of you guys? I'm in teacher ed, so it's sort of- Okay, you know, that makes sense. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, we just want to see it. You want to see it? That <laughs> 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 makes sense. Um, I use Padlet a lot. Are you guys familiar with Padlet? I'm not. Oh, I'm Padlet. not. I've only used it once. Um, if you would like Padlet access, just let me know and I can create an account. Okay, so so what I do with oh, Padlet okay. because sometimes um, you kind of you know you don't want to penalize it for not reading, but you want them to understand they have to read in order to, to pass the class, right, and do their work. <laughs> so what I do is I use Padlet. It's a visual bulletin board, so think of it as an visual bulletin board, and I have them post a question from each chapter that they're supposed to read, and then a peer has to respond to their question, not me, but a peer, and when mm -hmm. they respond. When they respond to that question, they have to actually cite where they got it from the chapter. So that, number one, shows me that they've read. And number two, it, it's so much better for them because at the end of the semester, they, they're able to put everything together in a final project. When I used Padlet, I had them also create a website. I did this for a multicultural class. And so what they did was I told them, what if you were a teacher? and you wanted to have resources at, at your fingertips or where to go to to learn more about multicultural education, what would that site look like? So they create these beautiful websites for elementary, secondary, and adult education. 
um, based on what we learned in the class and based on the chapters that they read in the book. So it was crystal clear that they were able to make those connections to the textbooks. So I was very happy about that. So that's something else because I did with Google Sites, which is free. Uh, Padlet, I don't know, is Padlet free, Caesar? We, we pay for it. We have a okay. nice license. Okay, so that's free. Um, another thing I did was um, I use case studies quite a lot with ethics in research. What do you so, use? Uh, uh, case studies. Oh, oh, case studies, yeah, sure. With ethics and research. And mm -hmm. so typically students would need to just actually kind of do a breakdown of the case verbally in class. What I did this time was I had them do it on a blog. So they broke down the cases in the blog and each one was responsible for posting their, their analyzation of the case study on a blog. So I did that on a blog. Caesar, I don't know, what's, what can we have as, I did on edge blogs and I know that cost or there's a free version, I can't remember, but I don't know what we have besides Blackboard, there's a blog. Yeah, we don't have a black, uh, enterprise blogging um, uh, subscription. Yeah, okay. Um, you guys are familiar with Flipgrid? That's another thing I use for reading. So what I have students do is they have to record themselves with two takeaways from each chapter they read, and then they have a peer ask them questions for further reflection on the chapter. So you see the student asking their, or sharing their two takeaways from the chapter, and then you have their peers. I usually tell them to pick one or two peers to respond to, because then that gets the person who actually recorded the video to think deeper about what they read, because their peers are asking some really great, great questions. So that's another way I get, I get them to interact offline out of sight of class. Okay. I, I'm going to need some more explanation here, Sandy. <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> not tracking with how I understand Flipgrid. So it's obvious. Flipgrid, I've heard of Flipgrid. Okay. Yeah. So tell me what this thing looks like. So what is, what's the video that shows up on the Flipgrid? Um, can I share my screen? Sure. Yes. yes. I, in a minute, let's see. Who, what, uh, Adela, if, do you if Adela lets you. Okay, I think you can share your screen now. Okay, okay hold on. Great. Let me... Let me pull it out really quick so I can show it to you. Thank you. Um, whoops, hold on. Uh oh, okay, got bigger. <laughs> Jeez, I have so many tabs. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Can y'all see my? Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let me. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Hold on. Live yeah, I have another. One. I have another one. I'm sorry. I had another. Live miners is something else I used to use as well. Okay, let's see. Is this one? Yeah. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Can, yeah. Live binders. My no, not live binders. Okay, hold on. That's a different one. Jeez, what a day so far. All right, hold on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, let me try this again. Philosophy okay. And okay, so here's one that I did with my class. I'm just going to pull up from, let's see. Oh, yeah. So you have the students. I don't know if you'll be able to hear me. Hear them. Can you hear? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. I can hear. So what you see, oh, she, hold on, she's not a good, hold on, she's not a good example because she didn't have someone respond. She, I think it looks like she made it, okay, let me go. Oh my gosh. But to kind of get us started while you're looking, so the video is the video the student makes about, let's say, their big takeaways from the reading? Exactly, right. Okay. And, then, and, then, and then what you see is, when you look at their video, down here, well, she didn't have anyone respond. Hold on. It's really, <laughs> hold on. Just, let me go back to it. This, <laughs> may be, this may have been one of the first ones that they didn't realize I had a response. So here we go. All right, in chapter nine. So here's Alyssa. And so Alyssa made her video. And down here, Kim asked her a question.
So that's how it works. So what they do is they'll record. It's very easy. Um, in fact, let me, I'll show you what it looks like. H has anyone here not used Flipgrid? I haven't. Okay. All right, let me. And so really the thing about Flipgrid too, Sandy, if I could just say it's part of sure. Microsoft purchased it a, a year or two ago. So it's part of our Microsoft license. So it's in Office 365. So everybody has it free to them. So we can definitely help people access it. And if I want to respond, I can reply and it'll show the video. I have to allow my microphone and then I press record. Okay. It counts down. Hey, Kimberly, that was a great response. Can you tell me a little bit more about, you know, I would ask her more and can you tell me what, how you think this will impact your research? And then you go to next. You're out, you're allowed to review because if you want to redo it, you can. So you review it. Okay, so is this a tool that kind of gets used asynchronously? I might record yes. Yes. my reflections on the chapter. Somebody comes in, views what I have to say, adds a question, then I come back in and I'm supposed to answer. So yes. if you get a conversation going, it might be a little bit more authentic than that discussion. Correct. Thing. Correct. Exactly. Ah. And plus it, it allows people to see your, their faces. I don't mm -hmm. like that picture, but I just want to use that as an example. <laughs> 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 so, okay. that's a cool that, idea I love it and the students they started at first they're like oh no we have to see each other and I'm like well yeah <laughs> so, really? um, but they, yeah. they ended up becoming really pros at it by the end and they actually loved it and they get very playful um, like for example let's see um, like here's Darren he does like he keeps his, his um, see he put a emoji on his face <laughs> that's pretty clever so how do you handle the timeline of this sort of thing so let's say is you there a deadline for my initial little video and yeah so what I do is I give them a week so the readings are due a certain day so they have to post an initial yeah. video talking about their takeaway and then I give them until the following week when we meet class to make their response to their peer to ask further questions Okay, and then when does the peer and do the uh, respond to the the questions at another in another little video thing? Okay, and I I what happens is because sometimes I ask them to respond, sometimes I don't. It just really depends on how much time we have and what the timeline yeah. looks like. But when I do ask them to do it again, I I usually ask people to do initial response after class. So let's say class is on a Wednesday night, yeah. it's due by Friday. That's initial response. Then I have the peers ask a question by let's say Sunday. And then I have them respond to their peers by the Wednesday, the following Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, so I, I break it out. In kind of the management piece yeah. rather than the, the um, actual how to push the buttons because I know we got great tutorials and all that. Yeah. So yeah. you're pretty good. You have pretty good luck at getting them to kind of meet the deadlines and have this actually roll along. Yep. As long as they know what the deadlines are, they're good at it. They're, they don't have a problem. The first week they have a, you know, they're like, oh, I'm, ha but what I love yeah. about Flipgrid too is that it, and I don't know, we're not, we haven't decided whether we're going to go to Canvas, but it's actually embedded in Canvas. So there's no, I couldn't log in, I couldn't get in. It's actually in the course and you can click on it. I don't know if it can be done like that for Blackboard. I have no idea. Yeah, it, it can just because there's not an Office 365 integration in the same Got way. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's one of my favorite tools that, here's the blog I mentioned where students, you like my clever title, Fostering Learning, Foster. <laughs> <laughs> so the students would do their little case studies so in you know part five case five and they would instead of reporting out they would actually write a blog there's their references so I told them to be as creative some of them included graphics some of them didn't um, but yeah so I did case studies um, I mentioned about websites here's um, critical resources for um, that my multicultural students did. Mm -hmm. And so they did this on um, Google sites, included little videos, but this was their final project because they had to take everything that they learned in the class and create this wonderful resource for future teachers. That's really professional looking. Oh, uh, I know they, you could tell they really like tried so hard to, 
because they were so excited and they were so excited that they all worked on it together to make these. So what I did was I put my elementary folks together, I put my secondary folks together, um, and we they actually did it. Now what was really interesting was at the end because we talk about you know, so these are the race card wall. I'm not sure you're familiar with that. So they were brave enough to share this, which I was very very impressed with because this is pretty personal. Um, but yeah, isn't it beautiful? They did such a great job. It really is, yeah. Very impressive. Um, I did it with my philosophy class as well because, um, I don't know why, oh, I can't, how come I can't get to it? Uh, nope, sorry, that's not what I want. Here to go. Oh, let me show you Padlet real quick. Yeah, show us Padlet. Sandy, how do you grade these? Are the are they I, required I have, to do a certain number of flip grids or a certain number of posts to the website or a certain how? I grade it on quality. So I have a rubric where I look for things that when they make connections with the text, do they go above surface level thinking, and is it more critical reflection? So I have rubrics for all of this. These things that I've done. So here's a Padlet. So I'll ask the students to post a question, and they do so. If you see what happens is, here's a student who posted, um, and we're then what they did. Seeing, we're not seeing your padlets. Oh, you're not? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm we're talking. seeing your, we're seeing where it says course. Huh. And then we're seeing files. All right, yeah. hold on. What is happening? Where's my Zoom? Hold on. I see padlet dog. Okay, hold on. Where did my Zoom screen go? Oh, oh, never mind. I know what happened. <laughs> Jeez. You guys, it's been one of those days. Trust me. It's a Friday. It is Friday. It's okay. <laughs> All right. We're, there it goes. Okay. Let me pull it up. Here's my Padlet. Okay. Now you see it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. So here's an example where the, a student posed a question. I said, post one question from chapter four, 14, and they did. All the students have their names on them. And when they respond, they tell me who they're responding to. So this is your response to Melinda. And as you can see, they're not tiny little responses. They actually do cite that shows that they've actually been reading. So you can have different kinds of Padlets. Um, here's another one that I had. So do you have one, a different one for each uh, chapter, for instance? I do, yes. So that way they won't get confused. I would get confused. That's why I was lying. Yeah. Um, but it's, really, it's a really great way for them to, and they do it before class starts. Yeah. So, so that's our Padlet. Um, I think that's all I have for you. That's Learning perfect. Blog, okay. Flip grid. Okay. Yeah, yeah and I'd be happy to share anything. I'd be happy to share any rubrics if anybody wants to see those. Um, and if anybody has any questions, please let me know. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. See, see, so you'll, you'll put that on for us, uh, Padlet? Yeah, just if you could email me and I'll send you your Padlet information. Okay. Mm hmm And um, would uh, Sandy, you want to? Could you put one of it, one of your rubrics in the chat, or you just want to email it to me, and I'll send it to people? I'll email it to you. Okay, great. That'd be that'd be wonderful. Okay. Okay, Teresa. You want, well, let's start. Let's make sure there aren't any qu more questions and things about all of this. Oh, you guys also. Um, one thing that I've done in the past too, let me see if I can pull it up. And this is easily be done with Flipgrid. I used to use VoiceThread, but that cost. Mm -hmm. um, but to get students to really think at a critical, critical, um, what they would do, so it'd be the same kind of thing where um, mm -hmm. you, the students, but obviously not a 25 minute video. I think Flipgrid, you can do 10 minutes, which is fine. 
Yeah. And so what I have is the students will, the presenter will present whatever topic they're talking about. They had to post an outline in the discussion board so their peers can see what the outline's gonna be about. And first of all, let me backtrack. They're small groups. So I put them in groups of four to five, but not more than that. So each group, each person is responsible for doing one presentation. But this is like a um, kind of a, this is like what the task is so they understand what, what they're supposed yeah. to do. So that it's perfect examples. And what I find out, and I can, I'll be happy to share this with you guys. Just remember to use Flipgrid instead of VoiceThread. Um, the students, again, this was for a culturally, I can believe it was a culturally responsive class when I taught at a previous institution. And I've used it here as well. Um, but I've changed the wording for whatever class I'm teaching. So they share their experiences. And what happens is once the, 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 the person does a presentation, the peers go in and ask questions. And then the peer goes back and, and responds to those questions. So kind of like what we just did a while ago, mm -hmm. but the outline is here. So if you look at this, what did we hear? So it kind of helps the students kind of figure out, well, what did we hear? What we didn't hear and we need to know more about, et cetera, et cetera. And when I, both warm and cool comments are like constructive criticism. So you don't want to say, well, I disagree with what you said, but more like, okay, I understand. I don't, can you tell me a little bit more about where you're coming from, you know, when you talk about X, Y, and Z, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the presenter does not enter the conversation. So what you have is you have the students talking to themselves that are in the group about their present their peer who just presented. So I'm looking at my, I'm not, it's not really, as it's not synchronous, it's asynchronous. So I'm looking at what my peers said about me as a presenter, right? Not to take it personally. <laughs> and then the presenter, yeah. right, the presenter actually responds. And then, um, and they respond either, I, I've had them respond either in the group forum discussion or I've actually had them respond in voice there before. Again, there would be this different one. At the very end, they submit a one to two page paper about the process, what they experienced with this process. Students really like this because it's a great outline for them to look at and think deeply about stuff. Um, but again, you can use it with Flipgrid instead of VoiceThread. Yeah, and you know, regardless of the platform you use, I'm impressed with the way it makes presentations more interactive. Exactly. We've all been there where some poor students given a presentation and everybody else is on cloud cuckoo land. And, <laughs> and I've done this in face-to-face -face classes as well. So just without the yeah. video, but with a group. I'll yeah. spread out. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing so it face to face. To, to, whether you're face to face or not, I mean, yeah. Yeah. use it because yeah. of the interactive potential. Exactly. Thank you very, very much. Let's move on to Teresa now. Let's see. Teresa. Yes. Teresa is a, comes from the School of Business where they have a really massive capstone project for students who are in the uh, undergraduate program. Yes. And um, everyone does it the same. And that's not the primary focus of what she's going to talk to talk about. She's going to talk about a shorter kind of presentation that's designed to help students get ready to do that. And is that a fair, uh, fair introduction, Teresa? Yes. Okay, take it away. All right. So, well, first I was going to mention, and I mentioned this in a different se um, session that I did with Susan and Terry, is about Popsicle Stick. It's an app. It's very easy to use. I don't know how many people use it in here. I do not teach elementary education, but I understand that many ed elementary education teachers will have a cup full of popsicle sticks that have students' names on them to call on them if no one was is responding or if they want to encourage more participation. And I found that through Zoom, a lot of students don't seem to want to contribute as much as they did when they were in person. So for example, if I were to ask a question like, what was one of the, the um, apps or one of the types of, of programs that Sandy presented to us and everybody looked at me with their eyes glazed over, I have it on my phone right here and I can click random name. Carmen. And so I don't know if y'all heard that. Did you hear it? It called Carmen's name. I, I entered in everybody's name in here. And um, so the students, it's funny because I will ask them who wants to answer the question? And if I get blank stares, then I'll say, okay, I'll just pull out my app. And many times they will rush to answer yeah. to preempt <laughs> the call. And then if they, if they wait, I'll say, okay. And then they think it's funny to hear who, I, I'm gonna call her Siri, even though it's a Popsicle app. And so 
you know? There's the, okay, so Kat, did you hear, could you hear that? Maybe I need to turn up my volume. Yeah, so Kat uh, was called on that one. Um, Carmen. Okay, and sometimes she'll repeat the name. So it's not quite, it's supposed to be 100% random. <laughs> but what you do is you just enter in, I just do the first names of everybody in my classes. And that way I, I can just click random name, call it out. And then sometimes it's a good way to also keep attendance in check so that they don't just turn on their, well, I guess turn off their webcam and then walk away and never be seen again, right? So if they call, if I call their name and I say, Caesar, are you here? And Caesar may or may not answer, then I know, okay, he's not here and we call someone else. And I'm, I'm <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was just using you for an example. I knew you were here. Um, but so that seems to work really well. So as a segue into the capstone project that we're talking about, we have two a smaller project and then a great big large project. And the smaller project in our Capstone One class is a group project. And I put them in multidisciplinary groups because the Capstone has all of our majors in our business school. So for example, if they're in a group of six, I try to have an accounting major, a management major, a marketing major, an international business major, et cetera, so that all of the same disciplines don't lump together. And that way they actually have to talk interdisciplinary with each other. And they are assigned one of six cases that they will analyze through the semester together as a group. And this is in preparation for their big project with they, which they have to complete individually. So at least for the group project, they are, to, you know, if a marketing student needs information about how to look at or, or remember how to review a financial statement, they, the marketing student will have an accounting student in their group to help them. Or if an accounting student doesn't remember what the four P's of marketing are, for example, they'll have a marketing student, et cetera, et cetera. So when we do the group projects, because it was supposed to be in person, we had to quickly transition to online. I gave them the option of either pre-recording their group project, which is a 30 minute presentation. And then they have a 15 minute question and answer session. So they could either pre-record it, their 30 minute presentation, email it to me the night before their, the presentation is due because I'm teaching synchronously. And then the, the next morning I will open up the classroom. I put a timer on my screen and then through Google, excuse me, through Microsoft Forms, I have a quiz prior to them presenting the case. And the quiz is just basically to see, did you read? If you read the case, you know the answers. It's only two questions, they're open-ended. And I can show you an example of a quiz. I've got it, oops, I've got it. Sorry, I opened up Camtasia, which by the way is also a fantastic uh, resource. But you should be able to see my screen now. Um, can you see the form on the yeah. screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so for example, this is WMO quiz. They had to read the case to know what WMO is and that's Walmart online. So that was a quiz that they took. So they have to basically enter in their first and last name, put what was the main, main dilemma or strategic issue in the case, and then one of the specific strategies that was mentioned in the case. So if they can't tell me what the main dilemma is, and for this case, it was just that Walmart was competing with Amazon. So it's a real short answer. They don't have to write a, a novel. Um, and then one of the specific strategies, one was that they were going to start delivering to lockers um, and maybe you've seen or maybe you've had an Amazon locker delivery or something like that. And so really simple answers, but if they didn't read the case, it's obvious. And then I give them five minutes at the beginning of class to write in their answers. Usually they're done in about two minutes and I'm waiting for the timer to go out. But at least I can, they have to have their webcams turned on so that I can at least kind of proctor the quiz just like I would have in class. And they're it's pretty obvious that they're answering honestly, as opposed to trying to cheat because, you know, it's either a zero, a 50 or a 100 that they get. And um, they, they seem to be pretty honest about it. And then this, this sheet that I'm showing you now, after I close the responses to the quiz, I then open up what, what I call as an observation sheet. And this kind of keeps everybody in check for making sure they're watching the presentation because I do have them, this is a, a, a big tip, I do have them turn off their video when they're watching a video that I am showing because that helps with the bandwidth and it makes it a lot less, less glitchy 
on the student's end. And also if you put it in um, Windows Media Player, that also reduces the um, glitchiness of any videos that I'm showing. So for that 30 minute pre-recorded video, it's a lot less glitchy and a lot more, it flows just much, much better if they close their videos. Well, since I can't see them, I at least want to have them answer in on this observation sheet and tell me, you know, what is the name of the case? I need them to tell me three detailed observations from the presentation in the case. So it's also obvious if they write down something that was not in the presentation that they just either got from somewhere else or remembered from the reading. And then I also like to give feedback to the presenters. So I have them write down two things that they really liked about the case. Plus I figure that helps them develop the managerial skill of providing feedback to peers, um, which they'll have to do on the job. And then two things that could be improved about the presentation. And I tell them you have to put at least, two, you have to answer both of those questions because every presentation has two things you like Every presentation will have two things that can be improved. So they have to answer those questions. And then I also have a, an any additional comments box here. And many of them will put a lot of positive feedback for the presenters um, in the little comment box, which is, I think, really thoughtful considering I don't even know if they're watching the case, if it's pre-recorded. And then if it's live, it's also interesting because the students that are presenting, I make one of them a co-host so that they can do all the PowerPoint transitions. I, I tell them I'm not going to be the slide, you know, I'm not going to manage your process. You get to decide how to do it and you get to practice this. And so a lot of them are really good at doing it live and dealing with any technical glitches and sharing their screens. And um, then at the end, they have to field any questions. So whether they pre-record it or whether they're doing it live, after their 30 minute presentation, what I tell the students that are in the audience is they write any questions in the chat box or they can ask their questions like we're doing right now, um, just kind of interrupting or, or um, asking you know, as we have the questions. And then I leave the chat box also up to the presenters. They have to moderate the chat box. They have to field any of the questions that they get and then answer those. And then of course at the end we give everybody a big round of applause and and then I also have a rubric that I, I grade from and a rating sheet that the, the group members have to rate themselves um, and then post the grades on Blackboard that way. But they've all just really embraced the idea and have enjoyed using Zoom to, to present. Although most of them say they'd rather do it in person. It's just been a really great learning experience for them. And it, this also helps me too, because I used to do paper and pencil um, observation sheets and quizzes, and now I can just download it from the Excel spreadsheet and grade the quizzes grade themselves essentially, and then the um, observation sheets I can quickly go through without having to manage a large stack of papers um, that I have to collect and then and grade. So that's been really beneficial, and um, I think that was those were the main things that Susan and I was going to talk about, unless anybody had questions about something else. Any questions? Because I've always got questions, and I don't want, uh, but I don't want to steal. <laughs> I'm that way with my my students too. I'll say I'll open it up to all of the students to ask their questions, and then they know once we have a certain gap of silence, then it's my turn. Um, so usually, someone will also throw in another question just to delay that process, but. <laughs> You know. no, uh, thank you, Teresa, for reminding us about the Popsicle Sticks app. I think that's yeah. going to be beneficial. It's great. And I, it, it's just so funny when you tell them, okay, I'm going to pull out the app. And then someone like said, well, just jump to the answering. They just don't want to be randomly selected. And, and then, like I said, if I turn my volume up loud enough, they really enjoy hearing <laughs> whose name is going to be called. And then you can always read the lips of the people, which I won't do here, um, and see if they're telling you some kind of word you don't want to hear them say about getting called. So, but they'll always answer. They answer. They don't mind being called on that way. So, no, it's it's amazing that you know it's the fickle finger of fate. It's not you picking on them. You know, right? Yeah, the literal yeah. popsicle sticks. But this app's going on my phone. I'll tell you. Do you, do you sometimes right. call the name, or do you let it always hear the name? Because in in K-12 or like K-5, they'll just pick a popsicle stick and they'll um, call whomever. Do you know what I mean? Oh, hmm, I didn't know that. No, I just oh, yeah. always let it pick a name. I, 
I don't ever know who to pick and I want to feel like it's somewhat random. So I'm not either a calling on the same person or yes. be kind of letting the same person answer over and over. So it's also yeah. a good way to encourage. No, it, no. Yeah. No, it's yeah. I can let it call the name, but they, could they, they at least know it's legit. So you, you let him, you let him hear it. So it's yeah. not. Yeah, because the popsicle stick, sometimes you'll call on somebody who you haven't heard from for forever. You're just like, oh, yeah. So. I was going to ask, will the app call your name more than once, the same name? Yes, and I believe, I, I haven't tried this, but I believe with the app, you can also put the order in which you want the names called. So it doesn't have to be random. Okay. I just prefer it to be random, but. Yeah, to yeah, Kathy's yeah. point, I think you can put it in a particular order. That way, if you haven't heard from certain students, mm -hmm. you might be able to put the, put it in the order so it seems random, yeah. but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's great. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great little app. I think anything yeah. that breaks up, you know, that usual three or four customers, um, you know, is a good idea. So about uh, presenting live versus presenting a taped version, uh, percentage choose what? I'm sorry? When your students present, how many of them choose to go live and how many uh, choose to um, uh, record in advance? So we had one lucky group that got to go before spring break. And so yeah. they didn't get to choose. So of the five that were left, I think three went recording and two went live. Oh, so pretty and, close to half and half. Yeah. yeah, in the live group, it was interesting because it was based on their feedback from the pre-recorded group, they said it just seems too scripted. We want it to be a lot more animated. We want to be able to ask the students questions because that's part of their grade is just um, interacting with the audience. And so they they felt like there just wasn't enough interaction and they wanted to make sure the students were, were there and paying attention. And so that's exactly what they did. They interacted with the audience and they got a lot more positive feedback from that too. But I was just nervous that the Zoom was gonna crash or that somebody was gonna get disconnected. But it didn't, it, it all it all went through really really well. Same with the pre-recording. We never had a glitch or, or anything. So it, it worked really well. You know, these are pretty major projects, even at that 30 minutes of presenting and 15 minutes of Q&A. But it seems to me this would lend itself to short things too. Mm -hmm. You know, short little beginner projects, uh, little presentations, and so on. I don't mm -hmm. know. Anybody else think of how that might might show up in a in another class? Uh, get out the app. Get out the app. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, the, the app. The app is. Where does the app come from? What What is the name of the app? I kind of missed that. I it know it was the pops. It was called what? Popsicle sticks. Popsicle sticks. I mean, I can just go on. How do I find it? I just went to the app store and typed it. App in. store. Okay, I got you. Okay. Okay, I, I can do that. People, okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Sounds I interesting. I didn't know anything about it, and I think I had googled. You know, how do I get? you know, people to respond in an online session mm -hmm. and, up and I had never done this, you know, cause you can kind of cold call when you're face to face and it's no big deal, but I wanted something where, you know, since everybody's kind of looking at the same zoom screen, mm -hmm. you know, if they're, if you're face to face, they can look down, <laughs> right? But if you're looking at the zoom screen, everybody looks like they're making eye contact, which is, you know, the cardinal rule not to, you know, mm -hmm. don't want to make eye contact. <laughs> Um, and so the popsicle sticks just came in, the app oh, came in okay. really, really handy. Interesting. Sounds very interesting. Yeah, that yeah. does sound. Mm -hmm. Carmen. Carmen, do you have something you wanted to say? Uh, I was just going to add that I think uh, I'm going to download it, but I think my approach will be in, during my first class is just let them know that I really have a fun tool that I may use, but I'm hoping not to. It's a <laughs> <laughs> and, and explain to them what it is, but just that's, in a fun way. <laughs> that's exactly what I did. I said, guess what, you guys? Over <laughs> weekend, I found this really cool new app, and I'm going to try it out. And what it is, and then I explained how it worked, and then at first, they were kind of excited, and then I was like, oh, you know, that does not sound like a fun, really cool yeah. name. Like, oh, it is. You'll get to hear your name being called. But they weren't thrilled, but I was, so. That's so, yeah. 
but um, yeah, I'm trying to think other things that I use. I use uh, video clips a lot, as I mentioned. Um, I use the Google Forms, not Google Forms, I use the Microsoft Forms, Microsoft Quiz. I have mm -hmm. the students um, also make a, and my, another class, they do a multimedia presentation. And it's somewhat similar to the live presentation that um, the class I told you about does, except this is a service learning project where they've actually gone to an organization and performed service. And I require them to put what I call an in, a 10 minute infomercial together about the service that they did and how it maps onto, this is organizational behavior class, onto the concepts in organizational behavior. And they have to put all of that together and then we watch those in class and so that's that's a lot of fun too it's about a like i said a 10 minute video but we still do essentially the same thing and then i have them talk about kind of what their reflection was after we watched the video and then i use the polling function in mm -hmm. zoom for them to vote on which multimedia presentation was the best and whichever one wins gets an additional five points added to their group project grade and so they, that usually kind of ups the ante for how well the video goes. And I tell them, I'm not, I'm not grading your technical skills in terms of creating the video, but I am grading the content that you put in. And the students are probably going to vote on your technical skills for the video, but also the content. And the, but they, they come up with some incredible little videos, too. I'm always impressed by those, whether we're in class or not, because they're always electronic. So... And um, they do a really nice job with those, too. You're the second person who's talked about uh, ways to get students to earn the extra credit points and thus raise the level of quality a little bit. That's oh, yeah. A idea, you know, extra just, credit it seems to be their currency. That's for sure. I know. So, mm -hmm. Anything for one point. You, I, you know, I sometimes want to say, how about a 50-point assignment? But, you know, oh, well. I know. I, there will be things that, you know, daily grades there, you know, I'll give 10 daily grades, for example, or I call them in-class exercises. And then I'll say, okay, if you attend the career fair that we're having, you know, in September or whatever, I'll add 10 points to one of your daily grades. And so that's like not even a one point of their overall grade, but they're just all about it. Okay, do I need to get there early? Um, do I need to dress formally? What? Can you look over my resume? And, and they just get super excited. And so, you know, it's easy sometimes to, you don't have to give them much, five points, 10 points, and they're super excited about that too. So also I was going to mention with the videos, um, I don't use Flipgrid, but I do use the discussion board in Blackboard. And for my business communications class, I had them, I call it a show what you know. And so they have to look at the chapters that we've covered since the last exam and find an example. So for example, um, we covered formal reports. And so they might find an example of a formal report, say a journal article, and then they have to present for a minute and a half and record it um, on a video. And then they post the video to a Blackboard discussion thread and then they have to post their video before they can comment on somebody else's post. Mm -hmm. And so then I do kind of the same thing. They have to comment on two other posts and then I grade them based on their commenting, but also on their posting, but I just do it through Blackboard. And yeah, that, that seems to work really well too. To make the discussion board conversations a little more conversational. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's talking about exactly the same thing and chewing over the same, you know, same few paragraphs. Yeah, and I also still, um, since it's a business communications class, not only do I have them comment on what was presented, but also again, one thing that they did really well and one thing that they can improve. So yeah. that as they're, you know, everybody hates to watch themselves, but um, also to hear it not just from me, but from a classmate is nice too, and to practice getting them saying some constructive criticism too, because sometimes yeah. nobody ever wants to give constructive mm -hmm. criticism. So yeah, it's part of part of that grade too. Yeah. Okay, other questions, comments? Very interesting. Susan, I went ahead and posted the rubric and that handout I shared on the chat. Oh, okay. Okay. thanks. Right. Thanks. One of the, you know, kind of 
little parting comment. A lot of all of these um, activities were ways to get students to listen to each other's work. You know, there's that really powerful ingrained thing that the only voice they have to pay attention to is our voice. Mm -hmm. um, and this kind of interrupts that, you know, because they're, they're real, you know, they're real mechanisms where they have to comment on what people are saying, respond to it, give feedback. Um, and it seemed to me that that idea, regardless of the, the platform you use, is really important. Like, so with, with Teresa's, I probably wouldn't use forms for the quiz. I would just do a Blackboard quiz because I'm lazy and there it is right there. Book and I don't have to do one more jump uh, over. But, you know, the platform's not the issue, is it? It's really the, the kind of the thinking through how we're going to get students to engage with each other and engage with the material. Well, and I find that, that using the groups in Zoom has been really eye-opening for the students because they did not realize it can be in groups. I guess some of the professors that other had, they didn't realize that. So when we, mm -hmm. we did it in my class, they were, actually, they were actually able to be very creative because I said, you still need to do an activity because I do chapter presentations in our capstone class. And they had to do an activity with their, with their classmates on how to apply what they learned in the application. So mm -hmm. I said, try to be as creative as you can on Zoom. And they're like, well, how are we going to do group work? I go, don't worry about the group, me put the group you know, configuration. I'll show you that when we get to class, but think of something creative and they were able to do that I was so impressed that they were able to do group work with zoom in a creative yeah. way online yeah mm -hmm. one of the first class sessions back from you know the whole extended spring break I you I made the um, pre-arranged breakout rooms and when we came back from the breakout rooms to the larger session one of the comments they made to me was I felt like it was a normal class again even though we were online, it felt like I was with my group and it was normal. Um, so that was really good feedback. Also, oh, by the way, I was going to mention, Susan, part of the reason why I use the Microsoft forms yeah, is because I can put a link into the chat room or a mm -hmm. chat box and they can just click it and immediately go to the form and complete the quiz as opposed to having to be logged into Blackboard or click okay. on anything. I, I figured it was a smart but, reason. <laughs> what? I use Blackboard quizzes too, but I just found like people would say, well, where is it in Blackboard and blah, blah. And I was like, just here's a link. All you got to do is click it and you can just answer. But no, I use, I like the Blackboard quizzes too. I've always been a huge fan of forms. So I'm glad that people are finding other ways to use it. The quiz, the quiz tool is really nice. Um, but as far as doing anything, surveys, quizzes, um, just getting information from people, uh, if you haven't tried forms, please contact Caesar or I. We can talk you through it because it is a really powerful tool and it's free. It's part of our Office 365 account. So uh, it's, uh, it's all part of our uh, uh, something that we have that we can supply you with. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of uh, it doesn't take a lot of training or a lot of time to show you how to use it. And it works. Great. Hey, Brent, I'm glad to see you've joined us. Uh, so we've been talking about different ways that people do manage presentations and projects in um, our, our new, new digital world. Uh, Brent is the band director, correct? I am. So you, what do you have to add to this conversation? Uh, well, I appreciate the invite, Susan, and I'm sorry I'm, I'm late. I was actually teaching for the past two, three hours doing individual conducting lessons because I teach okay. <laughs> class and the baton is right here. And, you know, we're, and we're going back and forth and doing that because it's a class required for all the music majors. Mm. Um, so, you know, so they can get out and not look like idiots when they get up in front of music, <laughs> musicians. Sure. Yeah. So had to work. So we're doing lessons and their final project is a, a, a recording that they're conducting to either a choir or a band that they're uploading a, a video of them recording of them conducting to, to, to YouTube. So um, that's what we're working on. And we had students who wanted some extra help. And, um, mm -hmm. and I think probably the first thing is in terms of presentations and how uh, I've been managing it with the music classes, because, because if you think about it, music is something and the arts, uh, theater arts is something that you have to do with other people in close proximity. Yeah. Well, coronavirus has other ideas. Mm -hmm. so, so one of the things that we've had to do is be flexible 
and we've had to realize, okay, well, what we do normally cannot be done this way. The internet between each other is not strong enough to where we can actually play our instruments at the same time and then have everything line up. There's no, there's not enough technology in the world or money right now for all of our students to do those things. So a lot of the presentations and things that I've been doing in class have been a balance of synchronous learning where we meet at a specified time so that they can feel like they're in class or, I mean, I'm sure a lot of this has been said, so I might be rehashing it, but um, I apologize. But then the other part is we have asynchronous learning where where I'm creating QuickTime videos or I go into the Zoom function actually because of all the share screen things and I'm able to share share the screen with the iPad plugged in so I can uh, bring it up and then go to the screen and then here's the music and here's how I mark it and all and the and the screen is mirroring what I'm doing on the iPad. Um, mm -hmm. So that is something that I've been doing. The QuickTime function on my MacBook has been great because I'm able to record uh, a share screen, you know, where I'm recording, where I'm giving a lecture, and then I have my slideshow moving next to the side, and those, and that has been uh, fruitful with the students that, because that way I can explain conducting concepts and things. So, those are basically the two main tools that I've been using. Uh, one, one other thing before I turn it back to Susan, uh, I think just a philosophical thing that I thought about. She asked me to come on to this thing about finals and giving finals and things like that. And actually the minute this happened, I decided I wasn't giving finals. <laughs> so this is, the, this is the no final exam crowd here. <laughs> the, well, one, like for instance, one yeah. of the things we do in conducting is they have they take these terms tests where they have to define all these musical terms and they have to come in and have them memorized. And it's, it's great because you see them practicing with flashcards in the hall and it's awesome. <laughs> well, this way, what, how do I stop them from looking it up while they're doing it? Yeah. You know, honestly, at this point, when I, you know, I know I have them memorize it, but in real life, if I'm working on a score here at home and I don't know what the term is, I just go look it up. I have a, I got a, a thing right here. I got my, boom, A to Z. <laughs> two. They can just go look it up. So I said, you know what? I'm not, I'm not doing it because the time that we have to grade and the time all has been shifted in so many different areas, let's make it easy. Let's take it, let's relieve some of the pressure that exists. And the feedback that I've been getting in conducting class especially has been, they were like, we didn't know how this was gonna actually happen. You made it work. And that's been very nice to hear because they don't have to say anything. They could just <laughs> lay, lay in their bed on their computer if they wanted. <laughs> Make them stand up, so I'm a jerk. But, <laughs> but point being is I eliminated some of those assignments that I just don't think matter. Like to me, this is just me talking. They don't matter as much in our reality now than I would. Do you think I have a written final for conducting? Totally. Mm -hmm. I totally have a written final for conducting, but just not this year. I'm just not doing it. Well, and I think, you know, this circumstance has made all of us think about really matters in a, in a given course and putting our efforts there. So I need to ask some stupid questions, okay? That, that's my role here. Uh, so you were talking about like marking on your iPad when you were getting ready to conduct. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not a music major. I thought the marks were already on the score. What are these other marks? Uh, give, me, give me one minute. Okay. <laughs> While he's getting ready. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say I am the mean professor that's still doing finals. Yeah, okay. And I, I will tell you, I had all, all my fine converted them over to Blackboard. They were paper and pencil. And I had it all set up so that since we're synchronous, they would just do it during the class period. That's all yep. the time I gave them to complete the final. But I had them all on Zoom and had them have their cameras. Their webcams had to be on and facing mm -hmm. them. And yeah. so although I couldn't 100% guarantee that they weren't looking elsewhere online. I could certainly tell if they were typing or, you know, clicking. And so the grades for me seemed to indicate that they were not cheating. Um, <laughs> I hate to say it that way, but um, it seemed like they were being pretty honest. And then I only had one student who had a time zone difference. She was in Korea. 
And so what I had her do was after everybody in the class zoomed and took the exam, I used Respondus Lockdown Browser and Monitor and yeah. had no problem with her taking the exam through through Respondus Lockdown Browser and Monitor, which I, I hope maybe if we continue online, we'll continue that monitor subscription. Because we it, have, we are, we are continuing it. Oh, great. It was, you heard it, you heard it here first, but really second. <laughs> Other, a few other people know. Um, the, Zoom, the Zoom proctoring was really nice too because if students had a question, they could write me privately in the chat box and I could yeah. respond to them privately in the chat box mm -hmm. too. And it worked, it worked really well. But I totally get that, you know, to each his own as far as finals go. It was just one of our, our grades that we had to have. So, but. And, you know, everybody, um, everybody has different views on this. I, I, somebody I team teach with, uh, we go round and round on this. Um, but as far as she's concerned, all the tests take place before midterm. And there are a lot of tests. And then after midterm, it's projects, presentations, artifacts, things you create. So again, these are all kind of philosophical and probably driven by the discipline too. Okay, I gotta see what gets written on this iPad, Brett. I'm <clears throat> sharing my screen at this point, and I'm, okay. sharing, uh, I'm sharing what is on my uh, iPad. Hopefully this will sync up. So, so right here I have, you know, this is a score that we're using currently in, uh, in conducting class. And there's a, a there's an app that we use called Fourscore, F O R E, S O R E, Fourscore. And one of the things I can do in the in the it has a metronome, uh, as a metronome in here, and there's a way to mark music. So for instance, I want to make sure that I can cue the clarinets here at the opening. I just mark it. And I can do like that and I highlight it and then, oh, I need to make sure I pay attention here to the trumpets when they enter. Oh, softer. And everything that I'm doing is lining up here on, on the screen so that we can mark the music and they can, because when you're conducting, you're not necessarily just conducting the notes that are already printed. You're actually conducting some of the markings that you put and every student score looks different and the way that they mark things look different because the the things that they are marking are for them only and so we're fascinating thank you yes yeah, so, so this is this is how i'm i'm able to do it and then you know once the markings are in they're saved and the, and the screen actually just has this tap function to then go between the music so interesting thank you very That's much great and you and the thing is you don't have to it's not just music this is a pdf that i uploaded so you could actually let's say it's a, a class that is heavy focus on reading you can put up the 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 uh article as you're teaching and then you can sit there and highlight and go and this part right here i want you to look at this this is really what i'm trying to drive home and you okay. can share it in the classroom it doesn't have to be music it could be any pdf you want mm -hmm. okay that's coming that's come to my ipad thank you yeah. You're literally using your iPad as a second screen, and that second screen you can now annotate any way you want. Like you can also bring up a blank screen. Um, Patsy could bring up a flat, flat, a blank screen mm -hmm. on hers, and like uh, bring up one of her note-taking softwares, and then just start writing formulas out. Mm -hmm. So because basically all you've done is you've turned in like if you've got two screens on your tied into your computer. All we've done is turn the iPad into a second screen. Oh, okay. Interesting. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm always interested in teaching, and particularly uh, beginning students, either beginning in the university or beginning in the major, how to annotate a text. And you don't need to put much more than a couple paragraphs on there to, and then demonstrate, you know, how you mark what's important, because they, they want to just highlight everything and turn it all yellow. But um, to show their <laughs> But uh, it's much better to show them how to pick out what's really important. And this is a great way to do that. We had lots of ideas today. Interaction, obviously the theme Very of Very interesting. Okay, last question. And I also posted a handout on clarifying and forming questions. Since even though we ask students to ask each other questions, sometimes they don't know how to question. They don't. So I, I put that on the chat box just to get, give you guys an idea why, because on the rubric it says clarifying and probing questions, and that's what I refer to that handout. Oh, okay, great. And we, we practice it as, as a class, you know, ask me a probing question, ask me a clarifying question, because you're right, they don't know, a lot of, many of them don't know how to question. And so if you're requiring them to question on Flipgrid, it's a good idea to have some kind of 
guidelines for them so they can know what kind of questions to ask. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, that's, sure. that's great. And you know, Sandy, as, as you were talking, I was thinking that even when we come back to quasi-normal and maybe you're teaching a bit more face-to-face, -face, there's something about being able to show students something on a little piece of video of what they've done, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Where the class is going by, the talk is going by, it's kind of hard to say, oh, and there's a great example of a clarifying question. You know, right. we have a little moment where we can pause it and look at it. Yeah, so, That's I, yeah I think this is, has some, for me anyway, some continuing use. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I know you did some of these things beforehand, before, <laughs> before the new challenge. Yeah. Okay, well, again, Thank you all very much for joining us. Friday afternoon, extra bonus points, stars in your crown, as my mother would have said. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Sandy.